What's going on guys? Welcome to Built From The Bomb, and this is building my dream warehouse. Let's get to the video. So, before we actually start working on the warehouse, let me explain what I actually have here. So I just bought this commercial property here in South Florida. It's a little bit under 2,300 square feet. It has 1,700 square feet of warehouse space, which I'm gonna be converting into my dream garage or dream warehouse. And then it has 600 square feet of front office space, which we're not gonna be touching in this video, but we're gonna be doing a complete transformation on the rear part of the building. And uh, yeah, just wanted to clear that up so you guys know what I'm doing first and let's get into actually working on it. Please ignore the Jeep right here. I actually somehow ended up losing the video I had of this warehouse with nothing in it and just showing the ceiling. So I'm going to be getting the dramatic effect in this building by painting the whole ceiling matte black. So all those red steel beams and then the white insulation is going to be going matte black. I ended up picking up 15 gallons of dry fall ceiling paint and we're gonna be going up on the scissor lift and pretty much just spraying the whole thing. All right guys, so I rented this thing at six o'clock in the afternoon. It's probably like two in the morning right now. I haven't even went through a full five gallons. I've diluted this with quite a bit of water just so it ends up uh, not drying up on me because this is like a, a dry fall paint. So when I guess the ground, as you can see right here, it's like dry. With me spraying it through that gun, I have to like thin it out a little bit. But this is how far we got so far. It doesn't look like that much, but still got that side to go. Let's see if I can get a little shot out here. But it's looking pretty solid. I'm making a lot of headway right now. I'm really in the groove. So hopefully, let's see. Yeah, see how that whole section right there is done? And we got over there and all this stuff right here. Just kind of going in the zones back and forth. You gotta get both sides of these, uh, these pillars. And then hopefully, before the sun comes up, I can have this whole area with the first coat. Sun's up, seven o'clock now. I'm still going at it. I got a lot of this done and it's looking pretty sweet. There's a couple little thin spots, but my main goal right now is since it's seven o'clock, I gotta return that at 5 p.m. I wanna just make sure I get all of this done, like all the rest of this, and make sure it's just covered, let it dry for a little bit because it changes a little bit the way the coverage looks when it dries up because it's matte. During this time lapse, it's the perfect time for me to explain that I'm not using the proper sprayer for this and it's taking absolutely forever to get good coverage on the ceiling. Once I'm done spraying these ceilings, I'm going to be moving to the floor, etching them, and doing a crazy marble epoxy on these floors that is going to make the whole room absolutely pop. It's Friday night, it's time to go round two. This time I actually have a good sprayer, so hopefully I'll be able to get this done a lot quicker. All right, I'll show you guys where we left off. So this is all that crappy sprayer, I sprayed all this. You see, from the floor, you can't really tell um, how like patchy it is, but when you get up here and actually look at it, you can see it's pretty patchy. So we're just gonna be putting a second layer on everything right now. And then I'm still gonna fill in like the spots like up there that I missed. And then I'm gonna take this black all the way down on this wall. Oh, there we go. It's primed up. Well, the ceilings are now done. I'm absolutely filthy. I'm filming on my phone now, not my normal camera, because I'm not even gonna get it out with how dirty I am right now. Check this out. Let me flip the camera. So it used about 15 gallons, the whole ceiling. There's no like white patches or anything in it. It may look like there's a couple little areas up in there, but that's just from being wet. I got all this ductwork sprayed and I ended up going all the way down on this wall to right there where those pipes go and it flows pretty nice. And I tried to black out the best I could in that back area, but it's drop ceiling. So I couldn't walk on top of it. And I don't know, I got it pretty good. When I build the loft, I'm gonna end up putting like a wall there anyway, so you won't see what's back in there but I did spray all the way back on that side. This thing's all done. Now it's just cleanup time. But now that the ceilings are done, it's going to be time to move on to these floors right here. I have the coarse cutting pad on this and then I kind of just started playing with it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray these floors down, get them wet and then just start cutting, just going back and forth. It's probably gonna take quite a bit of time. So it's gonna be pretty boring, but the ceilings are done now. I'm gonna tell you guys how much it ended up costing to do the ceilings black like this. I got all my receipts right here. It would have only been, it would have been a little bit less if I only needed the scissor lift for one day, but the scissor lift was pretty expensive. So the first day it was 212, and then the day that I just returned it right now ended up being 170. They didn't charge me for the trailer. So we got the scissor lift, that was a main expense. Then for paint ended up being $240 for the paint. And then I had to get this oil-based paint for like the metal stuff right here in the door so it doesn't have like coming off and people touch it 
that ended up being $86. And then I got $70 for the sprayer rental. And the whole total of that ended up being like $778. But I had bought a couple little things that I think I lost the receipts for. So let's just say a rough $800 to do the ceilings black like this. And they look absolutely great, you guys. Now it's time to get on the floors and hopefully we can get these floors done for under two grand. They wanted 13 grand to do these floors if I had some people come out and do it. And I'm not, I'm not doing that, you know? We released a thousand airs, you know, driving their rented fucking Lambos. Yeah. You know, and blowing the engines out on the South Beach because they don't have to drive it. But, you know, when, when, when the election was playing out, the cycle was <laughs> While I'm cutting this floor right here, I'm in a complete zen vibe because it is pretty peaceful just going back and forth kind of mindlessly. It's like mowing a lawn. I got a personal bomb with this floor at this point. I got probably seven hours into cutting it and it's looking really good. I've been going like a whole bunch of passes on it, making sure it's cut really nice. And this whole place is starting to look really solid. Now that the floor is all bare, I had to pull up. There was all this stuff right here because there was previously walls here you can see and there was three separate rooms inside this area right here. So I'm just, you know, slowly grinding it all off. I got all of those slabs right there. There's three slabs and then there's these like little quarter slabs right here done. And I'm currently doing this one. I already did all the passes this way. So it's 50% done. Now I gotta do my other, my vertical passes. And then this slab will be 100%. I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of hours. You know, I'll sleep a little bit, come back, then fill in all those cracks and then let it really dry up. And then Monday, I'm gonna be laying the materials and this place is gonna be looking so sweet. All right, we're back here. I got some grout and I'm currently filling in all these little cracks right here. And then also, like I said, there's these little spots right here where there were the studs that put the two by fours that held the wall into the ground. So I got those all filled up nice and flat. And I don't think I'm gonna really need to be doing much sanding over top of these because I got it pretty flush. I've never done this before but I feel like it's not too hard to, you know, fill this in. As I'm editing this, you guys, I have a feeling that I'm using some really like improper lingo and I'm probably doing some things a little bit off, but just give me a little bit of a break. I'm an automotive person and this is my first time ever doing anything with like actual like a house or, you know, like a warehouse. So, you know, I feel like I'm doing pretty good for my first time, so don't be roasting me in the comments like me saying Penagalli. I sanded down all the grout filler so it's all pretty even, and we're good to go. I just gotta pressure wash this down, push all the sand out, then let it dry for a couple hours. Then I'll come back and mask off the wall, and then it's time to finally lay this epoxy. So I just ended up picking up all of the stuff that I need right here. This is the color the floor is gonna be, and this is the color of the highlights. And then I got this right here, this is the metallic. You can see that it's gonna look pretty cool. It's kind of a little bit of a process to be able to get this commercial grade paint in here, but I'm getting hooked up. Right, so I just picked up the kits right here. So they're three gallon kits. We got six of them, so it's 18 gallons going on the base of the floor. So I'm gonna load these things up inside the truck. So this is the gist of it right here. We got ourselves about three grand in epoxy. We got six clear, or well, six base, six clear. We're now back here at the shop and I'm currently masking off the wall. And you'll see here in one second, my buddy Julio, he actually has experience laying this epoxy. So he's out here helping me out and huge shout out to you, man. I really appreciate it. All right guys, so I just went to Goodwill and got cleats because I couldn't find the metal spikes and Julio's got to throw an absolute fit because he does not want to wear these. So watch this, it's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> these are mint, dude. I'm not wearing those. I'm gonna... <laughs> Off at least before I use them. <laughs> See, they're not that bad. Be a little diva, dude. Dude, how big are these shoes? All right, so we should have everything. We got the roller to back roll after all the product gets squeegeed on the floor. And then what we're doing here is, this is the base coat, which is just a gray. And there is, it's a two to one ratio. So we got two gallons of gray. And then we got one hardener that goes in it. Gotta keep this going for three minutes. 
So if this was car paint, this would end up being the primer coat. It's gonna be soaking into the concrete and giving a really good grip, and then it self-levels on top, gives a very even surface to be laying the top metallic coat. But what we're doing right now is just cooking individual batches of three gallons, pouring them on the floor, and then he squeegees them across, evenly distributes the product, and then back rolls everything. And then it all self-levels, so it ends up looking really flat. Glassy, brother. And you'll see here at the end what the finished product looks like. And that's a wrap for tonight, you guys. Catch you tomorrow. We're going to be putting down the metallic. And this place is really going to start looking crazy. It's the next day, and the base coat is now dry. And you can see it looks absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if you guys follow, like, Tavarish and saw his epoxy garage that he did in his and he said it scratches really easy after because he put that rock res which you mix the metallic into that main coat that has the paint on it like this and yeah like there's not like a clear on top or anything so that's why his scratch really bad this is a better product than what Tavares has inside of his garage what we're gonna do next is we're gonna find any imperfections like where bugs landed on it sand it down and then we're gonna go and start applying the clear coat that you actually put the color that this is gonna turn into what are you doing you gotta sand the high spots and all the little rocks that came up little bugs that got stuck on So we got six kits of clear, and five of them are going this light gray. And then one of them is going to be the white, and we're double down it on the white metallic because we really want the white to pop. And what I'm gonna do is I have to pour the white into five different containers and then mix it individually for each kit because you wanna mix the highlight in when you pour like each individual kit for that. So I'm gonna slowly pour all this stuff out, mix the white in with it, and then be good to go. Sweet kicks, dude. Just did that section, I'm gonna show you guys this section, how he does the highlights in it. But this pretty much just gets pulled across and it's all self leveler, so it'll end up looking marbly like over there. I'm mixing in the highlights right now and you're just kind of making swirl motions and you can see right here where he dumped the highlights, just randomly scattered everywhere. They look like little semen. They really do look like little semen, dude. And then this is kind of like the finished thing. It's gonna look more like balanced once it levels out, right? Yeah. He's putting down the fourth kit. We got one more to put right here. But I'm gonna end the video here and we'll catch you in the morning to show you the final product of the floor when I can walk on it. Here's the last before. And we'll switch over to the after. All right, guys, it's the next day. It has been 24 hours since we laid that top coat on and it should be good. For foot traffic now, it's gonna be three more days until I can actually put cars inside of there. So we're not gonna be putting anything inside of there in this video, but behind that door is a crazy looking warehouse. Are you ready for this? Boom, check this out. Wait for this camera to adapt. This whole place now, completely transformed. If you guys watched that Moto Vlog video, I was talking about how I wanna be in a really cool like work environment so it doesn't feel like work. Well, this'll do it right here. This looks with the ceilings and everything. Man, this just looks great. I still have all the tape around there I gotta pull off, but that's I'm just gonna do that off camera. That's it for right now, you guys. I just check this out. I'll give you guys a couple little, little walk around of this since you know you just watched like a 15 minute video. I'm not just gonna show you a little 10 second clip of what this place looks like. You can get all the way here in the corner and give a little pan of it. Dang. Do you guys gotta see this with like some light on it? Look at that. This looks so freaking good. I cannot wait to bring all my cars in here and have it just looking absolutely killer. And then I'm gonna start redoing the bathrooms, do like a white marble in there. And then that front room, which I'm not gonna show yet, we're gonna be pulling up that carpet that's in there and doing like a black hardwood. I'm gonna make a little lounge section and it's gonna be sweet. Let's see how this looks filming wise with me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in a couple of days with some like car content. 
Wait guys, I almost forgot to tell you. So the total cost of doing these floors ended up coming in around somewhere in the $3,000 range. I think it was a little bit below that, but between doing the ceilings and the floor, the rental and everything, the total cost of doing this transformation right here ended up costing, I wanna say right around $4,000. They were trying to charge like, I think it was like 16 between doing the ceiling and the floors. I just knocked this out, did a whole bunch of labor this whole week and it was 100% worth it. I just had to leave that in here at the end of the video. I want to just kind of give like a gist of the cost of a project like this if you do it all yourself, but it is a lot of work, but 100% worth it. Now, actually, peace out. You're like, you're doing whatever you want to do and you're working on any project you want to do and you have some funds to make those projects come to, like, to life. That to me, like once I'm there, like, dude, that's like, that's happiness.